Today, the Clyde side speaks. Today, Scotland speaks. Not the Scotland of the lairds and their lackeys. They've never represented Scotland. Here in this demonstration, in this meeting today, is the real Scotland. The Scotland of the working people. And no title, no title, no rank, no establishment honour can compare with the privilege of belonging to the Scottish working class. Because we were aware of the pent-up anger and frustration of countless redundancies after redundancies, the crippling paralysis of small redundancies here and there with the cumulative effect of mass unemployment. We're not going to be hungry. We'll fight when we're in the yards and in the factories and not when we're in the dog shoes. philosophy that says that economics control men. Men must and shall control economics. We either win this one, and as we say in our leaflet, defeat is unthinkable because it's back to the thirties. As if you lose, or we win it, and we reverse the whole trend and put the working class on the offensive, and I know that. They will never get us out of these yards. You hear these when your kids on uh, come down to Rossi and your passing shipyards and docks. There's all the different strange sounds, you don't know what it is. And you say, hey, mister, what's that? You know, the guy says, oh, it's Fairfield, such and such, you know, and that's a such and such ship. You know, that, that there you get a feeling for the yards. So when you're at school, you know, and that's why we uh, dodged school, because we started going to launches then. Because when you see a ship in the water, you can never imagine it out of it. running about and it's always that semi dark and the fumes that are hanging, the welding fumes hang about in the air. And you go home at night your ears are sort of humming with the noise. <laughs> You can't see for this fog of welding fumes, burning fumes, um, the the smoke from makeshift fires that the men have made to to, to keep themselves sort of warm or pile of tea. In winter, it's even worse. It's a terrible place. Uh, the, the wind whistles through that icy wind, and the snow and slush gets um, forms pools of, of water in and in and out the welder's cable. Okay, it's a job, it's like, yeah, it's a job and it's a horrible job in many ways. Because the conditions you've got to work in are dirty, they're cold, they're wet. In the winter you might be working the tail end of a ship and there's a force eight gale and a snowstorm. But still, it's a job. And in many ways it's one of the least alienating jobs in industry. Because when you start with a ship, you start from the bottom and you finish it. And you see it through the whole way. And when it goes into the water, and no matter where it sails away, you never see it again. That ship is finished, and it's a sort of collective pride. Ten years ago, when a ship finished, you moved on to another yard. 
that situation no longer applies. There are no other yards in Upper Clyde to move on to now. There's nowhere else for you to go to. You either go and sign the door or you move south to London. In the situation here, uh, UCS, when we were being trained, were saying that they don't guarantee employment. Well, this is quite true. Um, when we started in Stevens, they didn't guarantee employment. But it was feeling assumed that uh, they always employ their apprentices. Uh, was working in their govern division. And then the training department came up uh, and they were going to upgrade boys. We naturally assumed that uh, they were selecting technicians for employment. They kept hedging when I, I was saying, uh, I hear they're looking for a boy. You know, I was asking for a job in maintenance in the Clyde Bank division. The training department gave me all sorts of nice little notes saying, uh, we would if we could, but we can't, you know. I was told I could get references from the personnel director, the managers of all the departments I worked in, all my work was good. When when it was made to them that uh, I actually was a member of the company, they, they tried to con us with it, saying that uh, the training department in UCS is a separate company. I think it is UCS Training Limited. And, of course, we weren't notified that we weren't employed by UCS. So they were really trying to pull a fast one. Um, this was their way of getting out of paying me any redundancy money that they might be due. But as you say, if they're not going to employ them, these lads are going to be on the, the brew, the social security, which is already has a glut of tradesmen who can't get jobs. And your time is just out. Companies don't want to know you. They say, well, what experience do you have? You know, we're really looking for someone with maybe three, four years experience. Well, the point is, how the hell can you get experience uh, if you won't get a job? You know, go have a job before you know the experience to get another one. That's the, the situation up here now is that uh, I think they're trying to drive all their young people into the forces or uh, off abroad or have them uh, out beating the grouse for them. and They're really um, training these boys, all different trades, and shoving them into the yard to finish the rest of their training. Training, you know, virtually for redundancy. It's not just Rolls Royce or UCS that's collapsing, it's the whole bloody system. The system of the bosses, the bankers. Well, you know, which can't even guarantee us the right to work. UCS is still dominated by the old yard owners. They benefit from a measure of about 22 million in extra profit in the past three years. They seem incapable of understanding that with the international freight rates declining, with a general recession in the engineering industry, no matter how much cash or credit they sink into the system, it can no longer be salvaged. This is the crunch. Since the Tories return to power, the working class has been faced with a broad onslaught the industrial relations bill, the frantic effort to get into the common market, the cuts in the social services, the deliberately created unemployment, the racist immigration bill. Once again, the ruling class have attempted to solve their problems by attacking our living standards. The threat and cause of the UCS is part of this attack, and it must be seen as part of this attack. <laughs>